Let's just dive right into it. I want to start with the Russia question here. How much is your exit from Russia going to cost you? Well, um, there's more complicated uh, than anyone could think to exit Russia. If you try to, you know, match the expectations or meet the expectations of a various stakeholders group, you have an employees, you have a shareholders, you have a um, governmental institutions, regulators, etc. It's really a pretty, pretty uh, complicated process. I mean, we're working hard to to conclude our presence in Russia, but I don't think it's going to happen in a you know in the in the in the time frame of the next quarter. But you know, assume that you know around the year end when we should be you know closer to the to the to the to the time when when we can exit Russia. Russia was a uh, important market for us is the seventh largest tobacco market by retail value in the in the world, and we had a 27 percent uh, share of that market. Uh, but you know the way the conditions of operating in Russia, the maintenance of the supply chain, the restrictions on the uh, fund flows, the banking restrictions, etc. I mean, essentially driving us to the conclusion that we will need to rearrange our our relations uh, to in Russia. Is there any indication of where the operations that are pumping, pulling out of Russia, what region do you intend to focus that in? Well, we have excellent growth in Asia. We have excellent growth in Europe. And uh, as you just mentioned, I mean, our acquisition of Swedish March, we're also opening, opening uh, uh, our access to the to US, which is a very attractive market for us. We have no presence today in, uh, in the US. So we have a plenty of the growth opportunities in the, as I said, in Asia, in the European Union region, and uh, hopefully soon also in the US. So it's not that much of an issue of the future growth potential which we have in front of us but obviously you know the whole investment which we have met which we have made in Russia so far I mean I somehow you know it's, it's, it's sad that you know you need to leave that much of a hard work uh, uh, behind you. Let's talk about some deal news here. $16 billion deal in the works to buy Swedish Match, but at the same time, you have Elliott Activist Management looking to potentially block that deal. They are building a stake in your shares. How concerned are you about the viability of that deal, given how opposed Elliott is to it? Well, obviously, you know, to conclude the deal, we need the uh, Swedish match holders' acceptance, but I believe that the 106 uh, Swedish uh, krona offer, which at the time when we placed the offer represents, you know, 40% 40, 40 of premium uh, to at that time share price of Swedish match is a very good and a very rich and a very fair offer. So I remained optimistic that we'll be able to conclude the transaction at that price. Is there any other deals that you're looking at in case that deal isn't able to go through? I mean, we always, you know, remain very open how we allocate the capital, especially, you know, with regards to some strategic opportunities which will enhance our, our geographical presence or our, you know, internal capability. A Swedish match is, is, is squarely fitting into both the geographical presence and expanding our portfolio of smoke fruit product. As you know, as our aspiration is to, you know, by 2025 to be predominantly smoke fruit product. We're on the great path organic to do it, or Swedish match obviously can accelerate uh, uh, our 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 smoke-free journey. Well, let's talk more about the supply chain issues. It's something I feel like has perhaps in the recent months perhaps found, uh, fell by the wayside a little bit. But I'm curious specifically about issues when it comes to semiconductors for your heated tobacco devices. Where are you getting them from, and what problems are you facing? And obviously, as the most of the electronics industry, very heavily dependent on the Asia and Chinese uh, source of the uh, of the electronics. Uh, I mean, uh, surprisingly, we had uh, quite a lot of bottlenecks for the most part of the last year. Situation started somehow to improve this year. At least we have a better visib visibility with regards to fulfillment of our orders. We are not out of the woods yet, but it's enough for us to increase our commercial. 
activities in the marketplace and we saw the results over the first quarter and the second quarter of this year, we could increase the user acquisition. And this obviously builds the very good base, the tragic trajectory of the growth for the, Yossi, for the if next year. I can year. interrupt you very quickly. When we're talking about the chip space in particular, though, you mentioned that a lot of it comes from China and from broader Asia, as, as is as true for a lot of companies. But the United States is looking to build out far more domestic capacity. There's a bill right now in the Senate to do that. Is there any indication that you would move your supply chain when it comes to procuring chips specifically to the United States? I think with our move of uh, entering the U.S. market in a more meaningful way, I would be very glad to tap in into the supply chain of electronics, domestic electronics in U.S., absolutely. Mm -hmm.